Hello everybody, this is Zigzag Zog coming to you from somewhere in this world. And we are opening without a mission. I mean, our queue is empty. Let's face it. So what I've done is I finally picked the three that were going to go out on the Manticore 1. And that's uh, Felipe H11 is heading back out. He's full strength. We've got Sean Skelpit McGuire is going to go back out. And Dark Admiral is going to go back out. That's step one. Then on the other Manticore, I'm actually going to send it out. But we're going to do a few safe things so I don't have to worry about an ambush with only one soldier here. Uh, I see a... New Jericho Haven up here that we can go trade with to get some more materials because that really is what we're lacking at the moment. I'm, I'm, I'm okay-ish <laughs> with our levels on the other two right now. So we'll go up here and trade. Uh, maybe we'll do a couple of these missions that I know don't involve combat uh, just so we stay productive while we're waiting for the Far M module to finish being built in a day 22 hours. That way we can load up. And I'm probably just going to load up the six soldiers without a vehicle and take some chances with a possible ambush without a vehicle uh, just so we can get the other team out and get some experience. So that's kind of the overall view that we're going to do. The only other thing I got to do looking at our personnel is, first of all, there's one thing I did, and that is with the uh, speed of getting repaired, I changed the color. And what I'm hoping is, since your color is now drastically different than Citizen Andrew, I won't be calling this a speed of Citizen Andrew anymore. You know, Commander needs all the help he can get on these things. And then uh, GP... You actually have a, your first promotion just from the training base. And as everybody has pointed out, that first perk of yours, Survivor, great for Will, but holy smokes. You, I, I, you know, you're like a piece of paper as far as your hit points are. You got, you got 100 hit points. So what we're going to start out doing just uh, rather than pick up both of these at the same time, uh, Extreme Focus is what we'll start with. And the other pop goes into your strength so now you're up to 110 <laughs> we'll, we'll start fighting back to get your hit points back up where they need to be gp and then we'll hold off and, and we're going to build you a pistol also because we do, we have a lot of pistol ammo but no pistols in reserve and then the other one that needs a pistol is you max uh we will wait till nergal's wrath is Research, that's what's in, in the queue next. And then we'll see about building you your pistol at that point then. So that's the overview of what we're doing. Other than that, it's time for us to get flying. So Manticore 2, we're going to fly you up here for a trade. And Manticore 1, this is what I'm thinking with you. I didn't really say what I where I was going to put us. But, you know, we've dealt with a couple haven defenses over here we've taken out a nest over here and i've been eyeing this red mist over here and realizing it's been very quiet over here you know it's been very quiet and you know there's got to be some kind of pandora colony that's going to start causing difficulties over in this area so i'm going to actually start exploring over in europe and nearby here so if this place becomes active we're going to be ready. So I guess we'll we'll make this our first stop right here to start our exploration with Manticore 1. All right. This is where we get to trade. And what we're going to do, I'm thinking this first trade, uh, well, actually, the only option I have for trade is food. And we're going to trade food for materials just to get that back at least minimally in shape. And there we go. So what, what I'm going to do while I'm here, I'm going to go here by Rise by Sin, by Virtue Fall. And then there's another haven over here that's uh, prime for trade. I can decide at that point, because I can trade either tech, which is okay actually, or food at this point. And we'll make the call based on what the trade values are when we come down here. So let's do this first. Research complete. And we finished Nergal's Wrath. And here's where we get to find out what our new research becomes. And it is the Berserker class, which is somewhat of a priority. So we're going to put that in the queue. And to be quite honest, I am going to move that up. I think that's kind of important because that way also we have a chance for hiring when we get personnel in our base. We will have a chance to be able to hire Berserkers from that queue also. So I think I'm going to 
do berserkers fast before or first before we get over uh, to hopefully open up our laser technology. So I'm going to get in here also for a Nergal's Wrath. I noticed for whatever reason, uh, we don't seem to have one. And so I, I, I can't even remember. How did we get this, this reverse engineering started without one of those weapons? Because nobody is carrying a weapon on them. So I'm confused. You know, my memory takes a while to catch up with my thoughts. So, but I'm not going to complain. We, we have one. We can afford to build one. And there it is. So as soon as we're able to take everybody, we'll quickly, within 10 hours have enough weapons for everybody to use once we get moving. So let's keep going. In his essays, my great-grandfather recounts the story of the ill-fated Chinling Bashan expedition of 1915 and the journal of Lei Meng, the leader of the mission, who found evidence of a forgotten proto-civilization deep below the ground. There is also mention of James Dawson, a British photographer who stole most of the precious samples recovered by the team. What became of Dawson has always been a mystery, but now I know the mundane truth. He died here in the mountains, forgotten and alone. This proto-civilization, could it hold the key to defeating the Pandora virus? They say history repeats itself. Has all of this happened before? Okay, rise by sin by virtue fall. The coordinates in Symes' notes have led our operatives to a small abandoned camp high in the mountains. Behind it lies the entrance to a cave. So we'll investigate. The cave contains the corpse of a Caucasian male. It is hard to identify at first as it is overgrown with yellow, sickly looking leaves sprouting from the shriveled skin. A backpack on the floor contains faded photographs and a broken spot and broken specimen jars. Symes seems to have taken what he needed, but even what remains is enough to revolutionize our understanding of the planet's biological history. Our analysis of the leaves growing from the body show that this organism contains traces of the Pandoran virus, but a different, older strain. The implications of this discovery warrant further discovery. So there we go. Uh, that's good news. We got some research that opens up because of this, and that is Project Glory. We'll put that in the queue. And something that's different with the Terror from the Void mod, by the way, the Symes chain of events is not the only path to get to an endgame necessarily. Uh, there is another way to get the, the endgame technology unlocked, so it's not necessarily required anymore to follow the Symes path all the way through Antarctica, all that stuff. You can get the virophage and whatnot. I think one other way. So uh, don't quote me on how yet because I haven't done all these things. This is just my understanding of the mod. Thought I'd share that with you. All right. So there we go. We're going to still finish manufacturing, uh, excuse me, researching the Berserker before we work or worry about moving up Project Glory or anything. I am going to continue on our trade mission uh, with this Manticore coming way over here. This is, you know, I figure we get our best trade on materials with New, New Jericho, which is why I'm kind of doing these long flights. There's other places I could trade for materials, but, you know, since I'm not extremely in a rush while we're waiting for the Far M to be built, uh, I'm, I'm going to try and get the best deals that we can. We'll explore here. Yeah, we found, as we've been very good at doing, finding havens and not exploration sites. So I think I'll just keep kind of searching all through here. I think we're close enough to react if anything should should develop from this mist. And we'll pop down here before heading up to, or to more towards Europe proper. And we have another trade mission going. And we could trade food, four for six, which is not a bad trade. But I'm almost thinking, at the moment, I have enough tech. We can get it without hardly spending any tech. So let's do it this way. We'll hold on to the food in case we have, you know, the ability to hire back in our barracks at the main base. So let's trade this way. 
And that at least gets us to, to, to where we're functional. So I, I really don't know where to send you next that's safe, to be quite honest. <laughs> I don't really want to go to another question mark with you. So I guess what we'll do while we're waiting, and I don't really want to, I don't, it's not really enough to be able to just go hog wild at chaos. So we'll go back there, just not yet. We'll come up to frozen. That's a safe search while we're waiting for the far M. And then once we get up there, uh, we should be able to go back to base and hopefully pick up the other team and get going on explorations with the other team, finally. The Herald of Woe. Our operatives set down near an abandoned industrial complex. As the Manticore One lands, a man comes out of the building and starts waving at our operatives. He introduces himself as Dr. Peter Keene. He looks half-starved and feverish, staring at anyone who comes near with wide eyes. I need you to take it. Take all of it. I need to shed the bonds of the past. The mortal concerns of machines. Take everything, please. So, you know, I'll accept his offer. How about that? So we get some tech and materials. Why are you wasting time? I'm not telling you anything about my past. The past is irrelevant. Only the future matters, and I can't get there whilst I'm weighed down with all this mortality. The guilt is everywhere. Take it. Take it away. Our operatives accede to Dr. Keene's wishes and retrieve his gathered inventory of resources. So every little bit helps because we are going to have to build another airship because we're kind of maxed out with all the folks we've already hired on the ones we have already. So we're already <laughs> needing another airship. Uh, I can see that's our early cost sink of uh, trying to grow as fast as I'm trying to grow the team so we can get as many viewers in as possible. Let's get up here for another exploration. Aha, something new. Several members of base personnel have been caught sleepwalking and drawing elliptical shapes on the walls in an overlapping, almost hypnotic pattern that induced feelings of anxiety in onlookers. On walking, on waking, excuse me, the individuals were confused, but otherwise unaffected. All of them reported dreams of flight. Understood. Well, guess what's happening now? Something called omens of the void. We believe we are observing the first effects of the onyeric delirium on a collective scale. The phenomenon is akin to mass hysteria. Sanhedrin psychosociologists are rationalizing the documented instances of widespread psychosis as the result of stresses to which our communities are subjected when our species is facing the possibility of extinction. However, the global scale and eerie thematic Homogeneity of these events suggests a different causal relationship. Given what we know about Onyeric delirium and its connection to the mist, there is little room for doubt. Our collective psyche has become another battleground in our struggle with the Pandora virus. More mist in missions. Holy smokes. Well, we have one Disciples of Anu character right now that can help us on this one, perhaps. It has nothing to do with meteorology. We know nothing about the mist, why it moves, where to, why there is so much more of it all of a sudden. Yes, as a mist expert, I admit I'm a fraud. <laughs> he can't figure it out. Well, we will now have to deal with it. This is a new feature of the game on legend difficulty like we are in, we will be able to have up to four of these in action at once. And then by taking out layers and citadels, that's one way we can remove these void omens. But otherwise, if we are unable to do that or unsuccessful in doing that, they do disappear over time. But that way, there's probably always just going to be four. There's just going to be rotating and be different ones. But we'll, we'll see how this mechanic works over time. But for the start, when we do missions, there's going to be a heck of a lot of mist out there. And that, you know, 
this is I just hate this one because you know how I despise mist sentinels. Well, now we're going to have one heck of a lot of mist on the missions that we are going to be doing. So let's get back to personnel. And if we take a look at you, Max, and you have this ability right here, breathe the mist. That's one of the few ways we'll have to combat that and take and get rid of it unless we take extra grenades and just start throwing grenades around to clear the mist. And let me tell you, it's a lot of mist we're going to be dealing with. So this Void Omen doesn't have a huge upside. <laughs> some some kind of do. <laughs> In my mind, this one doesn't have one of those huge upsides. Now, we do have the ability to hire somebody. I saw personnel was available. I'm not going to rush too quickly yet just because we have no airship for this individual should we hire. So we're we're going to try and get that solved as soon as possible. Let's keep exploring. Ay 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 ay. We have evolution. And we have a muscled up shield bearer. So, you know, no more spitterhead, but you know, he's up to 290 hit points now. And as usual, close quarters evade is on these guys from here on out. And we have a gun with a grenade launcher. So we, we're going to start seeing our first grenade launcher. He also has return fire. And he also has bloodlust. So he can gain up to 25% speed and damage based on lost health. So the only good thing is, at least to start here, we can kill him. We can one-shot this guy. We can one-shot this guy, almost like our own sniper. <laughs> which is scary. So, yeah, there's something to be aware of. And then the Arthron Umbras are now available to exist. So are the Triton Umbras. And when we get to see our first Umbras, we're going to we're going to notice I'll spill one of the mechanics about Umbras right now. And you know, you can pause and and read these these stories here. Uh this doesn't tell you a bunch, but our soldiers are under immense stress, not to mention the drug cocktail and direct cortical stimulation administered to them on a constant basis. If one or two of them start seeing oil monsters, I say it's a tolerable side effect. Well, basically, the Umbras in this game are a little different than the Umbras in the base game. The Umbras are more a dream manifestation, I guess is one way to put it, of the delirium. So if an Umbra appears, if a character has no delirium, they won't get attacked by the Umbra now. The Umbras only go for those and attack those that have delirium. So that can be incentive for when we get a cure or treatment options uh, to take the treatment option, but, but that, that's just another twist and echo that happens in this mod. Now we're dealing with a Triton Thug, and uh, we know our Triton thugs have that, pack that heavy weapon of New Jerk, I mean, uh, Anu. So we don't want to let them get up close. And 210 hit points. And here is our first hitman. So we don't have to worry now about attacks from afar. Karins will become available, but we aren't facing any flyers yet. But apparently they've evolved. And the Myrmidon egg. So Myrmidons are now going to be a thing for us to deal with. So that was that was a big big report, lot going on in the evolution category. And we do have oh look at that. I see I knew. I just knew we were gonna get be getting one over here. So what we're gonna do, this is an equal eleven to eleven attack over here, and I'm gonna interrupt our exploring because it's not in the mist right now. And I wanna deal with this. Well, it's not in the mist, to be quite honest. Now, by saying that, when we get to this mission, there's going to be one heck of a lot of mist down there on the field in this mission. And we do not have anybody who can get rid of it. So I'm going to have the only counter I'm going to have is we're going to load up Citizen Andrew with a lot of backup grenades. And we're going to carry as many grenades as we can. And we're going to throw a lot of grenades because <laughs> if we want to move somewhere, we can throw a grenade, clear out the mist, and then move in that direction. Uh, I can't think of any other way at this point in the game to combat the mist other than have our will just go plummet. 
So here we go. Let's let's re change our course. Well, you know, we have time to finish our exploration at least. So let's do that <laughs> and, and hope <laughs> it's it's not an ambush. All right, the Berserker class has been completed. We will be able to start hiring the Berserkers now, even in our own barracks, if we're lucky. And we're almost done with our search, or I mean our exploration. Not a barnacle. Clinging to the ruins of an old library, our operatives have discovered a half-mad creature that resembles a barnacle with a human face. The creature, apparently former head librarian, is still human enough to give them directions to its hidden treasure. They're rambling and confusing, but somehow quite interesting. So we can follow the creature's directions. Better not, this could be a trap. Shoot the creature. Or this creature is an oracle. Ask the disciples to set down its wisdom. We're just going to follow its directions. And Sinedrian, actually, oh, I forgot that that was a, a something that comes from it. We gain attitude with Sinedrian, which I'll never turn down. And we get 25 skill points. So, okay. It's not easy to make sense of the creature's directions, but eventually, after a lot of effort, our operatives managed to find the stash where the librarian hid his favorite book, The Complete Works of James Joyce. A valuable find for humanity and for those of our operatives who are into this sort of thing. You seem to be genuinely on our side, and everyone here at Synedrion really appreciates that. Please understand that we are cautious with organizations such as the Phoenix Project, not because we're trying to be obstinate, but because we've had some pretty terrible experiences that we'd prefer not to repeat. You know that I have high hopes for an alliance between the Phoenix Project and Synedrion. So my advice is this. What would be really helpful right now would be a more direct demonstration of your support. That could really win some hearts and minds. Okay, let's continue. At this moment, we have a couple of really important projects running. The sort that could actually change the future, like improving our mist repelling tech, which may allow us to peacefully coexist with the new ecology, or deploying a new breed of modified plant to help us reclaim the planet for ourselves. Believe me when I say we've had a lot of debates about which approach is better, and there are some pretty opinionated factions forming. In any case, we're lacking enough people to support both projects at once, and it's a bit of a deadlock. So if you could lend a hand with one of them, that would mean a lot. Okay, so we know, well, if you've been around the channel a while, season uh, one, we did uh, Anu ending. Season two, we're headed towards, I think it's the Sinedrian one, season three, New Jericho, season four, Phoenix Point. So the only one we haven't done is this, the Terraformers. Problem is we're going to get some Big time negative rep with everybody but Sinedrian, I believe. And since I know I need I need to go for that ending, we're just going to choose it and bite the bullet. Here, if I wanted to try not losing as much with the others, I could pick this. Lose some with Sinedrian, I believe. But this is what the ending we, we need. So we're just going to push ahead and try to recover any lost diplomacy down the road. So, you're more on Nikolai's side of this debate, are you? He's one of the Terraformers, the faction that believes in, well, I suppose you could call them radical humanists. They believe we should be unafraid to seize power for the people, to assert the supreme value of human life and civilization. Zara, on the other hand, oh dear, I'm involving you in Synedrian drama, aren't I? My apologies. Good luck with the mission. Yes, the line that uh, identifies and <laughs> this this is Sinedrian in a nutshell. Oh dear, I'm involving you in Sinedrian drama. Well, well, we did take a big hit with Anu, negative 15. Now talk about double penalties. There you got it. New Jericho's attitude, negative 15. And uh, we have a new mission on the board. Okay, so we need to come down here. This will 
Although, let, let's take a look at our diplomacy right now. Just to see how we're sitting. The only good thing about that hit on New Jer or Anu is we had gotten them also near that 25, 24 mark. So we're, we're, we're luckily still positive with everybody, but only barely. Because you start getting into the negative, there starts becoming issues with trade and being able to trade. So we're still hanging on by a thread, being able to trade with everybody. So, oh, yeah, and coming in here, I think I have to build... Oh, we already got the Nergal's Wrath in there. I couldn't even remember doing that. How about that? Okay. So we finished this. Uh, we're going to fly down here to help on this defense. And we're going to see what this missed situation is all about. In 2022, a group of researchers investigating an anthrax outbreak caused by melting permafrost in northern Siberia went missing. The Phoenix Project tried to find out what happened to them, but our resources were stretched too thin, and our allies in the Russian government were losing influence, so we let it go. All these years later, looking at these samples, I wonder, is this where it started? Is this the first outbreak? If we had done more, could we have stopped it? The genetic material I have recovered might hold the answers, but I'm not sure I want to know. Okay, Frozen is complete. Our operatives have reached a defunct research station in northern Siberia, identified in Syme's notes as a significant point of interest. The doors stand open, and there are no signs of life. We will investigate. The scientists who worked at this station are all long dead. Their mutated bodies lie frozen in strange, demonic poses. For easy, or it's easy for our operatives to retrieve the samples they were searching, researching, which Randolph Symes came all this way to examine. All right, so we're almost done with our airship, so we're going to fly this manticore back to base. Here is the mission we need to accomplish uh, for the terraformers. Let's come back here and get ready for the, uh, the ship to be complete. All right, it is daytime. I guess we'll take that and we'll take what we can. The attacking strength used to be even at start, but the Pandorans are now outnumbering Sinedrian. So it's a good thing we decided to come over here. We will get some nice rewards. Uh, let's hope the mist doesn't prove too tough for us. Let's get in here, Dark Admiral, and let's see what we're able to hold and carry and do on this mission. Well, you, you have grenades there. You have grenade here. Uh, we're looking, I think, decent there. What I may do, rather than have you carry three of those things, I, I'm thinking I'm going to give you an extra grenade, Sean, just because we may need to clear some extra mists. So I'm going to give, make sure everybody... Well, except for you, because you can't really care. Well, you have the grenade launcher. So, yeah, you do have grenades. Uh, Sean, we're done. Oh, wait, did you have SP to spend? No. Citizen Andrew, one thing we're going to do for you is uh, we'll, we'll try to get a, another grenade on there. So we just have access to quick, quick grenades if we need them. And here, hmm, what I'm thinking is we're just going to build another grenade. You won't be caring to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking we, we have six shots here. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to carry this extra grenade here. In fact, here. And what I'm going to do is put that extra clip of yours on Citizen Andrew and deal with it that way. So we have your backup clip easy to get to. And, th and that, that's the way we'll equip ourselves for this mission. So we have backup grenades should we need them to blow away some mist and hopefully that's enough i don't know all items in this battlefield will be automatically recovered we'll see you down there all right let's take a look at the mist well guess what i guess on a haven defense we don't have extra mist so uh, i'm gonna report that just because i'm used to with this void omen seeing maps covered in mist quite a bit of mist so what do you know We'll, we'll report that as a potential bug, and we'll, we'll have that taken a look at. And I'm sure on a future mission now, we'll see what all this mist hubbub is about. But for now, let's get moving. We see one enemy over here. And it looks like a claw dude. 
with a spitter head. Not a ton of hit points, so this may be ideal since we're out of range of a zapping. Uh, for Sean, I'm thinking that might be a, a target for you. And we can bring you right here for a shot. Doesn't look like anything will be really in your way, so we're going to bring you right here for your shot. And by moving, we won't be able to put you on Overwatch, but let's see if we can just kill this thing first. Ready to engage. Well, he does have a spitterhead, uh, but we're going to center because, I mean, the claw is right there where we want to shoot. And, we'll, well, okay, he's, he's slowly turning. We'll, we'll take this shot. And by this much. Uh, yeah, that much. I think it was a lot of much because you hit that <laughs> instead of him. Doggone it. So now we have to think. Now we have to wonder. He's got pretty good movement. Well, the one nice thing is being up against Pandorans for a change. I don't have to... <laughs> I don't have to deal, at least yet in this mod's development, I don't have to deal with tactics at the moment. So I think what I'm going to do is scout forward with you, Felipe. Gross. And we have seen another one, and he has a grenade launcher dude. And he also is probably far enough away that we can't quite reach him. Let's see what your shot from there looks like. It's not amazing by any means, but we're gonna, you know, if I don't, if I don't shoot and try to damage him, he's, he's just gonna pump a grenade at us. Well, let's just see how spread out we are at the moment. Not a ton. So let's come a little bit closer. It'll be crouching, not necessarily at ideal angle of cover, but we're only gonna get one shot. Let's get a little tiny bit closer. It'll spread us out. And then perhaps he'll be less inclined to grenade us. Let's blast them. And we injured him, but nothing more. Now, Citizen Andrew, yes, you most definitely cannot get down here to reach the guy. What I'm thinking is I will bring you here and we'll see if we see any other enemies in the process. Once again, trying to spread some of us out so we are less likely to be a target for the grenade. And, you know, Myrmidons just became available and Myrmidons is definitely what we see. So what I'm going to do, just back off a little bit because these guys, you know, they can bite and start damaging us. But so they have to fly farther and can't bite us as frequently, we'll back off to what we hope is a safer distance do this and then you dark admiral i'm kind of thinking about stepping you forward one and i'm kind of thinking if i step you here we have a decent angle to squeeze a grenade through there on this guy the other option is send a grenade over in this direction but i don't like the trees as well this way so we're going to stick with my original thought Besides, we have Andrew ready now to pounce over here on whatever I need to try and zap after their movement. So let's see about launching grenades. Let me just double check the flight path. Yeah, if I if I kind of drop it in there, the thing I have to worry about is this pole right right at the start here. And we're gonna try putting it right there. Right, and I saw a lot of red over here, and guess what? Head, arms, he's going away. Plus, we found another hidden enemy over here too to keep an eye on. Look, I, I have a, I have a feeling that enemy's going for this desk though, Sinedrian and their special desks. Engaging. Oh, we had some help over there. Nice paralysis. That's going to limit his abilities to do too much to us. Yeah, that was it. All he could do is move a few steps and not shoot. How about that? And the Bermudons, however, be ready, Andrew. Oh, 
Oh. So uh. even Andrew didn't have to worry about the Myrmidon. Oh, but boy, that's the Nidrian guy did. Man, what I tell you, going for the desk. He only took off a, a shred of armor, no damage for you, Andrew. So that's probably as good as we could hope for. Now, let's see what we can see and how far you can get. These two guns are distant for us yet. This guy, not quite, not quite able to get up to him either. This guy is going to be interesting to see what he's able to do with his pistol or if he jumps down and, and doesn't do anything worthwhile. Andrew, I'm going to bring you, I'm going to bring you up this way. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, let's move you last. Let's see if I have a shot with you, Sean. Potentially. It's not going to be a great shot through the window, but let's take a look at it. And we're just going to kind of shoot into this carapace area here. If we're lucky, we can take out a pincer. If not, because just shooting out here on its own, there's, I think I, I'm going to try for slightly better odds to hit something by going here question is do I want to try armor break also since we aren't going to hurt him <laughs> yeah we weren't going to kill him <laughs> but we're going to try to hurt him and shred extra armor depending on where we hit carapace that worked that's what I was kind of hoping we'd hit is the carapace the carapace now has only 15 armor down from 40. So that's going to help others of us follow up on this guy. And I'm almost feeling like when I'm talking about others of us that uh, I forget this guy over here just because he's got... He, he may still be able to shoot a grenade launcher at us, but he won't be able to move and get close to shoot a grenade launcher at us. So I'm going to bring you over here just to do an extra shot on this guy. We'll come off to this side. Felipe. And it's going to be a quick aim, so it won't be an amazing shot, but... Catch me if you can. Taking aim. We're going to focus here to hope we hit something. And we did. And we must have hit the carapace a little bit because nothing else has turned yellow so good shoot and That's finally we got you dark admiral and i don't think we can get a grenade reliably in there so the question becomes what do we do with you and it might be i don't think we can shoot grenades far enough Watch over this. for these tritons absolutely not so i'm thinking we may want to do a little jet jumping with you to get you in position to help us coming up against these tritons so let's see where you can jump to not within range of uh, any of our synedrian friends out there so i'm going to bring you up here and there is a hole this is this is one of the solid walls so yeah i am going to bring you right there executing and we'll hunker down from that point and then sean we're going to overwatch with you because this guy could very well destroy this desk and then try moving and maybe, just maybe, you can pick him up. I'm on Overwatch. And then Citizen Andrew, we have kind of two options. Let these Synedrian try working on this guy since he can't move very far. And let's get ourselves open to some shooting. One of them already shot you once. I'm thinking if we come here I think those are the independents, right? Independent weapons? Yes. So they would get some shots on you. But if they want to stand where they are and shoot at you, they will pay the price. So we're going to move you here for starters. We don't see any more surprises. And... I'm going to set you right here. 
So hopefully those two low thrusters are behind that little wall and it's going to be hard for them to hit them. As, as we've learned, the thrusters are your weak point. So they can hit a high thruster in the back, but we're going to we're going to try this and, and, and hide your thrusters. Now, you know what I just realized? There's a chance I could have dashed and I forgot I've put the dash on you and you can even dash. There, there, there would have been a chance that you could have dashed and zapped one of them. So we will remember that for the future. Don't get too upset. Andrew. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, he's doing what I was hoping. Oh, no, you're supposed to shoot, not overwatch. Engaging. I thought he was shooting a paralyzing pistol before. He went for a kill. Now he's going to get bit some more and die. Okay, he moved. So that means only one shot, though. He's going to destroy the desk, I think. No. Yeah, he did. We just happened to shoot and take out the chair instead of him. Yeah, we just lost that Sinidrian guy. Now we got to worry about the Myrmidons because they're going to be coming for us. And he shot the water cooler. And apparently we've lost track of this Arthrod. Okay, going for the back thruster. They haven't taken it out. Uh, there's where he moved. Okay, so it sounded like uh, the other Myrmidons up here found another, or else that was the same person, and the second one had to had to kill him off. Oh yeah, it's that that guy's dead for sure now. Let's figure out what we want to do over here. I'm thinking more than likely I'm going to come over here and zap this guy. Because this guy, potentially, others of us can deal with. This guy's tucked away and hidden, so we're going to zap him. And I don't need... Well, let's, let's dash to do it so we can relocate ourselves as necessary. I promised I wouldn't forget about dash, so I figured I better use it. Okay. Now we only have one more dash within us. Oh, I could I could totally get out of his line of sight. It means uh, a Myrmidon may be able to jump over towards us, but even they're at a long distance away. Let's go see if we find a new surprise out here and try to limit the damage he can do to us and dash over here. All right, now we can take another sniper shot over here, Sean. Because there's no desk or chair in the way for you this time. Ready to fire. And we are not going to do another armor break, I don't think. Oh, what the heck? We have the will. It's only two will. Yeah. And that way we might be able to follow up with Felipe. Uh, without armor on the carapace, that'll really aid us. So let's give it a go. And focus in on that carapace. Gotcha. And I think we hit the carapace, and it should have no armor. Yeah, it does not. And I think that allows us to have a great chance to kill him, especially since you have two quick aims available, Felipe. Let's bring you up here and see if you can finish the job. Identifying target. Focus on the carapace. And we'll try that one more time. Just need the right angle. There we go. That means you, Sean, will be able to overwatch over this way. And let's see what you might be able to provide for us, Admiral. And I'm thinking a, a, a grenade might not be let's bad to weaken this guy down. And he ain't moving very far. Bleeding 40. That was an effective grenade. So what we're going to do then also is overwatch with Sean. 
And if he takes a step towards us, because that's, that's, that's the reach of our overwatch. If he takes one step towards us, I hope we can pick him off. And we will hunker you down. And we'll see what happens. The Myrmidons, it's going to be curious to see where they decide to go. Okay, that guy can launch his grenades now. The paralysis has worn off just enough. Oh, we didn't we didn't quite have a line of sight on him. I knew it wasn't a clear overwatch without obstacles. And it looks like they've done a number on the two Synedrian defenders that we've seen so far. They are both gone. Let's hope, let's hope they've dropped something nice for us. So uh, what we're going to do here is I think we really haven't seen any other enemies over here, but what's over in this direction? So Andrew, I don't know if you can even get over there. Now you have to go around. So we're going to bring you around. So, you well, I don't think, see, if you dash here, you still, you know, if we do double dash to here, you're still, yeah, you're still not going to be able to zap anything. So we're just going to bring you over here and wait and get you close enough where you could potentially help us out next turn. In fact, we'll do this. We want to let them see you. So let's dash here, and then we can pull back around the corner. I want to see exactly who's over there. And it's a Myrmidon, okay? It's the bleeding Myrmidon. So they, they see us. Now let's back out, back off to make it hard for them to do anything to us. And play it that way. And then over here, I'm thinking another grenade. May not kill him, but I'm pretty sure it'll get us close to uh, bleeding out. And now he won't even be able to shoot his gun. And, oh baby, bleeding 110. He's going to bleed out. So good job, Dark Admiral. Now we got to reorient ourselves over here because we got to at least the last healthy Myrmidon we are, we're aware of was up on the roof. So we're going to bring ourselves back as far as we can to do some overwatching over here and see if that can work in our favor. Hmm, there's not a lot of cover in this direction. Let's just see how far you can over... Okay, you can overwatch this far. There's obstacles in the way, so I don't know if this is going to be a great shot against this guy, but we're, we're, we're going to set the overwatch. See if we can pick him up. I'm on Overwatch. And we'll do the same with you. If you can go far enough and look at look at that. We'll we'll do a long distance Hail Mary Overwatch. And maybe if we're lucky, a Myrmidon that's on the roof decides to enter the cone of Overwatch that we've set. <laughs> Okay, that Myrmidon was able to damage one of the structures we were tasked with saving. This guy went hiding. Now, Andrew, do we think we can get there? Now I think a double dash will allow us to finish the zapping on this guy. So let's do it. Oh, I hope. I hope. When we're dashing, we don't really get a great indication on whether uh, we're, with, we're, we're within range to zap. So let's hope. And it looks like we are. All right. Now, Sean. This guy is tucked away really, really well. The problem is if we rush over here, and there's no windows down here, if we rush over here to this opening over on this side, we're going to have to worry about that missing Myrmidon coming down at us. So let's try this. Dark Admiral, can you get eyes? I'm going to have you jump over here. 
to this corner over here to see if we can find ourselves a missing Myrmidon. And I think we found a... No, we just saw the one we knew of. So we, we still don't know where that missing AWOL Myrmidon is. So... All we have to worry about is Myrmidon. So I'm going to bring you standing in the open because it's not like the Myrmidon can shoot at you. Just so you can do a random overwatch in case a Myrmidon flies towards you. I got this covered. Not sure where he's at. And then we're going to do the same thing with you, Felipe. I'm going. As we move forward hunting for this Myrmidon. And we'll just put your overwatch very wide, hoping to pick him up. Overwatching. And he's going to continue to destroy this thing. And if he destroys it, that's less... And I don't know where that other one disappeared to. I really don't. So, Andrew, we're going to bring you over here so you can take a look-see in here. In fact, you can get inside because of the hall. How about that? That will save a little bit of that machinery. Oh, I don't know where that... Uh, I guess somehow, somewhere... Sinedrian must have killed that other Myrmidon. I, I guess I, I missed that happening. Okay, two levels up. Dark Admiral, you're now level five. Sean, you're now level five. Good job, guys. And we will gain, well, we, we will, we're blocked, so we'll lose the increase in attitude from Sinedrian because we're blocked, but we'll pick up the rewards, which is what I care about more anyway. And wow, they, they were able to destroy 57% of the key structures. All right, the good news is uh, it's just magazines. Well, well you know, we're, we're going to have these developed soon enough, so the magazines will all come in handy. I will not turn those down. And we have failed to identify the location of the nest. The big reason of that probably is we do not have a satellite dish up and running over at this base, so it's a little more difficult to locate it without that. And as I knew, the diplomacy was blocked. Okay, so what I'm going to probably keep doing is exploring over in this direction and this neighborhood and with this team. And then over here, we're almost back to get re-equipped and our new ship is almost done. And then we'll be able to start exploring with a second team. And with that extra exploration, well, guess what? With the rewards we just picked up, first thing I'm going to do, even though I, I need a satellite, I'm going to get the next ship going. Oh, Oh, because I, I, I have to build another. So we have a way to answer that. And that is over here in our North Africa base. We will now repair because we can afford that. We're just going to have to wait two days before we can build our next aircraft. So we're not going to go hog wild spending because I need this extra aircraft that uh, we're looking to build. I will, however, take a look in the recruit section and see who is available. And we have a lab assistant who is acid resistant and privileged. Lower carry weight, we know that perk. We have a heavy who is also a lab assistant with acid resistance and a goo resistance. And we have an assault who is a condo raider. Kind of like that perk. Boy, a lot of lab assistants joining the team right now. I will not be able to uh, uh, add all of these at once. So what I'll do is I'll make sure I review our list and check out what our next request was. And it's it's open. And then the request after that is hoping for a priest. So we'll have to keep our eyes open for that. I, I don't even know if Anu has developed enough for a priest. So we may have to skip that person until we come up with a priest. But that's cool. I don't think there will be a problem with that as long as he gets a priest. So I'm going to hold off on the hiring since I don't have a ship to put it on yet, but we're, we're in posi position to do all these things. Let's do our two promotions. Dark Admiral, you now have Skirmisher. So if you take damage during an enemy turn, your attacks deal 25% more damage on 
till the end of the turn uh, when you are shooting. So that's pretty cool. We could also pick up Paranoid for you, which will increase your perception and hearing range, which I also wouldn't mind doing. But we're going to take Skirmisher first. And I got to think that I'm just going to pick up Paranoid because your, your health's okay. Your strength's okay for a heavy at this point, I believe, with your defensive perks you have. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I kind of want to pick up this too because we, we are able to at least build some melee weapons, I believe, right? Now that we have Berserker, does that unlock any of the melee weapons? Yes, it does. So we are able to equip you with a melee weapon too. So let's get back in here, Dark, and f make a final decision for you. Uh, I'm just going to save that so I can pick up. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to go with melee first before I pick up your extra perception and hearing range. So uh, this is the one I want next. So we can really work with our jetpack control to give you a new new level to your attack and try that out coming up. So there we go. We do have some new research here. Let's see what that is. A Myrmidon autopsy. We'll put that in the queue. I don't. I don't recall that that really unlocks that much, but we'll put it in there. It's a quick one. And shields, are we to the point where maybe I want to look at getting some shields going? I don't know. Let's let's just check the cost for the radar for the satellite uplink. 250. That's going to put us right down at the ability to still build an airship. So let's get let's now that we have the funds, let's let's get our satellite. So next time, if we have a chance over here, maybe we'll be able to actually find the freaking nest. And there we go. So we got one more promotion. That's Sean. You have Master Marksman. That's a good one for you. This is also a nice one for you, and we can afford it. And since with your perks, you, you are at 20 strength already with the bonuses, I'm going to go ahead and pick up Scavenger or Scav. Uh, so you get the extra will for your perks and, more importantly, the extra perception that that gives you. Okay, so I'm looking at the time. And once again... <laughs> We don't have any more missions. Hope you enjoyed today's mission. This is Zigzag Zog signing off from somewhere in this world. Thanks so much for watching, and I do hope to see you next time.